The last four years of me being here in Sri Lanka have been full on emotional and anxiety and stress filled. Let me just give you some context. <laughs> I came to Sri Lanka in March 2020 and it was just before the lockdowns happened because of Covid and I got here, I was like in Sri Lanka for six days just exploring the south coast and then I headed to Animal SOS Sri Lanka where I started to volunteer, that was my dream, the top of my bucket list thing that I wanted to do, so I started volunteering there and then the lockdowns happened because of Covid and I made the decision to stay in Sri Lanka instead of returning back to what was my home in England and that was the best decision I've ever made to not return home because I was really really depressed in England and I really really love it here in Sri Lanka like I remember when I stepped off of the plane that very first time into Sri Lanka I said to myself like wow I feel like I'm at home I just had this connection already I don't know it's really weird like then I didn't really think much about it but when I look back it's kind of weird you know that I had that feeling and yeah and then look at me now for nearly four years on and I'm still here and it's been an incredible journey it's been absolutely amazing so far like just so unexpected and amazing in so many different ways but also really challenging for me and sorry my heart's going like crazy and um, there's been a lot going on and a lot going on behind the scenes that we haven't really shared in our videos because our videos are always we're trying to be as uplifting and positive as possible because we really love that mindset and we would never want to portray like negativity through all of our videos because no one would watch it and we just want to like be able to inspire people to like do DIY projects or sky <laughs> or to um do like recycling upcycling projects or just in anything like if you feel like oh I can't do something we want to be able to show people you can you can do it you can do what you want to do like I've never had any experience with like renovating a home but now we've renovated some of our home and it's amazing so I've learned so much through this journey as well and yeah we just want to be able to like inspire other people to do that too and as well as promoting Sri Lanka because it's an incredible, incredible country and I love it here so much. But anyway, a lot of what we haven't shown on camera is the dark side to our reality. So I chose to stay in Sri Lanka and start working at the sanctuary, like full time working at the sanctuary, which was amazing, super rewarding um, to be able to give everything to healing an injured animal and to see their recovery and like what they came into the sanctuary like if they lost a limb if they suffered really bad trauma if they were disabled blind so much abuse or vehicle accidents like everything you can imagine we've seen it at the sanctuary coming in and dogs really pull through and it's incredible that side of it is amazing but it's also very traumatic emotionally as a person to be dealing with that and a lot of cases you can't save so unfortunately seeing death is a reality and it has become normal which is kind of scary that like it's normal for me to see those things like I see some people coming to visit the sanctuary just to visit for an hour which is amazing because we highly encourage people to visit the sanctuary and donate um, but then you see their emotions with them just looking at the dogs, looking at the dogs in the main area and they are fully recovered and super happy and healthy and strong and people get emotional seeing that, seeing the dogs like that and I get it, everyone is different but then I have kind of lost that feeling in a way because I've seen so much horrific things that I, I don't know, it's really hard to explain, like, unless you've been in that position and you've seen that kind of 
I don't know how to explain. Like, it's just, it's really hard. So yeah, through all the lockdowns and everything, we were locked down in the sanctuary. Like it was, it was full on work. I was working six days a week. It was like 10 hour shifts. It was crazy, like you could never switch off from it, even when you left work at the end of the day. You'd still be thinking about work and thinking about this dog and that dog and, oh, maybe I could have done that different, maybe I could have saved that life if I'd done this. Like you're always questioning yourself and doubting yourself and it's like, I just got to the point where I was like, I feel like nothing I do is good enough. I just, it would just really weigh down on me and you start blaming yourself a lot, even though like I know that it's wrong to do that, but it's so natural that you would blame yourself. But yeah, it was um, intense and it, it got to the point where with the lockdowns and everything, there ended up only being three managers, so myself and two others in a sanctuary with over 2000 dogs. And at that time with COVID, the staff were getting COVID, so like, we were going through periods of time where only half of the staff were working there, so it could have been like 30 staff a day with 2,000 dogs. Like, it was really full on work. And I was covering like disabled outside and clinic management. It was full on, the responsibility was a really heavy load to carry. And I just kept pushing through, you know, like sometimes we didn't even have a day off in a week. Like, we, especially in lockdown, we'd work every single day, like for a month, two months, I can't even remember, like it's such a blur that time. So I think back then, because it was still early on in my time in Sri Lanka, I was still had energy, you know, like I was still new to it here, but I didn't look to the future to see what that period of time was gonna cause me later on down the line, both physically and emotionally. Burnout is real and depression is real um, and I think it's really important to talk about that now which I guess is why I'm now sat down in front of the camera talking to you about it because I feel like I'm kind of in that right space to talk about it. I haven't been for a long time um, but yeah in this time in Sri Lanka for nearly four years it's just been like a roller coaster of a ride. It's been um, so many emotions. I think from watching our videos, one video per week, um, like 20, 30 minutes, it's easy to think that we live a dream life. We've had many comments where people are like, wow, I wish I could be like you. I wish I could live your life. It's a dream life. It's the dream job. And I get how that can come across. <clears throat> but the reality is it's not like that on a daily basis. I mean, a lot of it is highlights and it's amazing. Otherwise I wouldn't still be here, but um, there's another side that people don't see and I couldn't show on YouTube. Like it would be wrong to show on YouTube the most of the reality. Every day we were covered in wee, poo, sick, sweat, blood, tears from crying so much at the start I would I still do as well like I get connected to certain animals I think everyone does like you just have this like more of a connection with some and then when you lose that that animal it's like complete heartbreak so I've really tried to start like not becoming connected to a new arrival coming in or I don't know it's just like my way of dealing with the emotions I'm not complaining, please don't get me wrong, I'm literally just here to talk about um, talk about how I feel, basically. I think it's time. And I am really grateful for my time here so far, like I've learned so much and it's been an incredible experience, like I I can't even explain, like it's it's been an amazing time, even though it's also been challenging, I've learned so so much and but now it's like time to make that change for my mental health and I've pushed myself for so long trying to push my emotions aside and not thinking about myself at all like I would go for weeks without brushing my hair like I just didn't even think about it I was just so focused on waking up getting to work working at the sanctuary with the dogs trying to do as much as possible like way over the limit coming home, eating, sleeping. 
whilst fitting in the time to make these videos, edit these videos, and when we got our home, we were renovating a lot at night time after doing a 10 hour shift. I have been struggling a lot mentally recently, um, and sometimes it, I'm thinking maybe we should quit YouTube because it can be too much to try and do everything. But I love making videos. I really love it. I'm really passionate about it. Um, I really love the creativity side of it. And I really love what our videos and our YouTube community has done for our life. It has enriched our life in so many different ways. Like we've learned so much about being creative about the editing process, making a story, but also the other side of it, which is you guys, our audience, our community. And we've met so many of you guys who are incredible. Like I can't even, it's like one of my favorite things is to be somewhere and to meet one of you guys that like you come up to us and you say like, you, you know everything about us and we know nothing about you. So it's really nice to be able to connect in person and get to know the people that are watching our videos and it's so special and we've met so many incredible people that we wouldn't have met if it wasn't for making these videos on YouTube. But I'm also really passionate about working at the sanctuary because if you followed our channel for a while you'd know we love animals so much and they are a big part of our life and they always will be like they're not just a passion they're our lifestyle it's like a diet choice it's everything and I couldn't just like quit YouTube or quit the sanctuary. I had to find a balance. It was really important to, but also really, really hard to make a decision of like what to do. Am I gonna just quit the sanctuary? No, I can't do that. We should just quit YouTube. Like we've said to ourselves so many times, like let's just stop making videos. But it's like, no, like we can't. We love it so much. We love both. We need to slow down. Uh, I need to slow myself down for my mind and physical well-being. It honestly like got to the point where I just wasn't happy for a really long period of time and I kept saying to myself, why am I not happy? Lucy, like, look where you live. You live in Sri Lanka. Amazing country. You're super lucky that you're living here. You have an amazing husband, like, who is just incredible. And I'm ridiculously lucky and grateful to have him in my life because he is just, like, you see him through videos and so many people comment like, oh, Lahiri is so amazing, he's so strong, he's got a beautiful smile. Yes, but if you knew him as a person, he's just amazing. And I'm really, really lucky. But I just can't believe that he is in my life and I'm so forever grateful. I have amazing family of dogs around me who I love so dearly and they're just so incredible and they're survivors, they're miracles, you know, they're my inspiration too. I have an amazing job at the sanctuary working with over 2,000 dogs and some incredible people who are also really passionate about that and just being able to connect with like-minded people making these YouTube videos which is also really amazing and of course our beautiful home which we've been working on bit by bit to renovate to how we like it and it's personal. We've built most of it with our own hands. So I was thinking like, why am I not happy? I, I have everything, like I'm so happy with everything that I have. I'm just not happy. Like I just couldn't be happy. And I would just be crying every day. Like I'd have so many negative thoughts coming in and I would try to push them away. And I just couldn't, I just couldn't move past that. And even though I was going through that, like every day I was just trying to put a smile on my face and go to the sanctuary and be smiling and like just suppressing the emotions. And then when we were making these videos, like a lot of the time I didn't want to pick up the camera, but I did because I felt the pressure of creating the videos because I know people like are waiting for our videos every week and they want to see the renovation videos but honestly sometimes I didn't want to pick up the camera, I didn't want to put a smile on my face and talk, I didn't want to pick up a hammer and start doing some renovation project, I literally just wanted to hide away in a dark room and just like 
I don't know, just be there. And <laughs> I just honestly didn't know what to do with myself. But yeah, just kept pushing myself on and even though it wasn't, I wasn't in a good headspace. So something had to change. I couldn't go on the way that I was. Being at the sanctuary, working there, then coming home, eating, sleeping, trying to squeeze in, editing the videos, and on our day off, we would be making a video in that one day off, and then I'd try to edit it the next time, but it, it takes so many hours to edit a video. I think not many people understand the work that goes into making a YouTube video. But now I feel that our life is becoming more balanced. It's still quite new to us and we're still trying to find our feet, but it's feeling a lot better with the decision that we've made in order to create that balance and sustainable workflow. So I am still at the sanctuary, but I'm not managing at the sanctuary. I just go there for three days a week working in the clinic still but also being a part of the disabled and obviously all the dogs in the outside field and also doing the adoption program too which is really important then we're also focusing on these youtube videos creating editing and all the other work that goes into it and whilst also doing renovation projects and now we have our homestay which is doing really, really well. And I'm so in love with it. It's like a new venture. I'm also really passionate about that side of it. And it's really nice to be able to welcome some of you guys to our home because we've met so many subscribers that have come to book and stay with us. And that is just what it's all about. That's just, I just feel like it's full circle, you know, that you're watching our videos whilst we're renovating our home. You're watching all these projects and then you get to stay here that's super special and it's just really incredible to meet people and to make that connection it's like turning an online audience into our friends and from all over the world and everyone is so different and have a, has a different lifestyle a different upbringing a different career different thoughts, different analysis on the world. So it's really amazing to have these in-depth conversations. And I feel like that's really enriching my life too, to be able to, to meet you and just broaden my mind a bit more. So I feel like even though we're doing so much work still, we have more of a balance and it's like, we're just lowering each work so that it kind of is steady. I don't know, like maybe we are still doing too much work. Like we probably are. <laughs> but also I am a workaholic and Lahira is too like we, we both can't just sit still because then I feel really guilty that I'm sat still and I have like my big to-do list going through my head that's just who I am I have to keep working because I really like that I thrive in that but it's just about finding the balance and taking time for myself just to try and sit down for an hour and not do anything I'm really trying to get that into a daily habit I've been learning a lot about mental health recently and listening to different audibles and trying to do some meditation and watching different YouTube videos of how to help my productivity and to be self-aware. So yeah, it's, it's working out. It's still very new to us, but um, we're still trying to find our feet with everything, but I, I'm feeling a lot better than I was a few months ago. But then saying that, with trying to take this step back and trying to lessen the workload in each area, I do feel like I've failed in some way. Like it's a failure that I couldn't keep pushing myself to that extreme anymore. Maybe it's because I'm getting old. <laughs> I don't know. I just, yeah, I just feel like I've failed in some way and I'm still trying to deal with that emotional side of it and try to realize that I haven't failed because I've been successful in so many different areas and I am successful to have the life that I lead um, not like <clears throat> materialistic but I mean just like it's fulfilling to me um, I don't need much in my life, like just to be surrounded by these trees now is a success to me that I don't live in the busy main road area renting a home. I have 
our home here in nature and that is incredible that's super special to me but yeah feeling like a failure is something I'm struggling with too and I feel like I have so many big dreams like we, we are accomplishing our dreams, like with renovating our home and getting married, like that's a massive dream. But between Lahira and I, we both still have so many dreams. I just wanna do more, like we have so many big dreams together. I'm not gonna say too much yet because I really don't wanna jinx anything, but um, I just feel like life isn't long enough to squeeze everything in that I wanna do. So when I'm like taking a step back or if I try to have a day off, then I'm always thinking but like I'm wasting my time because I'm not working towards a dream that could be like I'm just wasting time and I've also been like quite annoyed with myself recently because I used to be able to read through like all of the comments on YouTube and Instagram comments and direct messages and I used to really love reading through the comments and replying to people and talking like that but now I just can't because of some negative comments we've had and I just can't I just can't like read the negativity as well as I used to be able to like we got to the point where we'd have a negative comment and we just laugh and it would be a joke and then it becomes like an inside joke for us but now we just can't bear to see a negative comment I think it's just because I got so low that it was like when more negativity comes in I just can't deal with it, like it would just be the end, you know, the thing that pushes me over the edge. Um, so I definitely have taken a step back from replying to comments, like you probably have realised I wouldn't reply to them as much. I'm still reading through some but not as much as I used to because I just can't bear to scroll through and find a negative comment, which I have been recently. I'm just really anxious to read the comments now, I'm something you probably don't know about me is I'm a really overly sensitive person like one negative comment can stick with me for such a long time and I'm sure many of you can probably relate to that um yeah and it like that comment will just go over and over and over again and I'll be thinking about it throughout the day and I just find it really hard to let those negativities go even though I know that it shouldn't affect me in that way but it does and I guess that's natural for it to. And I think I'm getting worse with it now, which is why I wanted to make this video, I think, because I think it's really important to speak about mental health and maybe not enough people are speaking about it. And I think in Sri Lanka, people don't really speak about mental health here, it seems. Like, I've tried to find a therapist here before because I knew I needed one back along. I needed someone to like help me through my thoughts and to try and help me understand like what I'm feeling but I couldn't find anyone I was like messaging therapists but I never had a reply so I think mental health really isn't spoken about much in Sri Lanka so I feel that it's important to talk about it and and everywhere in the world you know like we're all human we all have down days we all are affected in different ways by different things so I feel like it's really important to talk about but it is hard for me to just talk to you about it because it's how I feel and it's not positive so it kind of feels wrong that I'm talking about it but we're all human and I think we we really need to like just I don't know maybe if I can just change a couple of people's perspective then it would be worth it to to make this video I don't, I don't know I just feel like I have to make this video I can't move on with my life if I haven't spoken and been open and transparent with you about how I feel because our YouTube channel is our life <laughs> like we document our life here and this is such a big part of it we're putting our life out there and then for the judgment and negativity and criticism it like can affect people in different ways like there have been like YouTubers that have given their life up because of cyberbullying so I just want people to know the impact that you have by leaving one comment and maybe you wouldn't think it's that bad in your opinion but you don't know how your words can affect other people and leaving negative comments is just not okay like you're not getting anything out of 
leaving such negativity behind. And I watch so many YouTube videos, so many different people, different kind of, um, different kind of YouTube videos, people from all over the world, and yeah, maybe there's some videos that I don't like what they've said, or I don't like what they're doing, but I would never leave a negative comment, because that only would make me feel better, right, for leaving this negative comment, but it's not going to change anything in the long run. If anything, you're just adding to someone's low mood. If they read that comment, you're affecting them in a bad way, and I wouldn't want to do that. So if I just don't like something, I just would stop watching it um, and probably just not watch them again, like if, if I really didn't like something. And I want to be able to support people on YouTube because I know how it feels to put your life out there and to speak in front of a camera and have people watching your videos. And I just want to leave positive comments and encouraging comments and just be supportive on, on an online community. I'm sorry if I've missed some of your comments and I haven't replied. I hope that soon I can get back into being more communicative um, in the comment section. And I have started trying to do it again, but then I just saw more negativity and I've just kind of stopped. And I think it's really important for us to all be aware and conscious of how our words affect other people. Even if we don't know that we're doing it, we, we don't think we're putting out a bad comment. Um, it's just like, I don't know, let's say an example. Oh, you look like you've put on weight. That might not be a bad comment in your opinion, but to other people who you never know might be struggling with body image or self-confidence or have history of eating disorders, that one comment could affect them for months and months and could send them into a downward spiral again. That small comment could be a massive impact for someone. So it's like just being aware of what you're saying to people I think is really important in this day and age. And I think it's becoming more clear to me now how easy it is for people to judge someone on a 20 to 30 minute YouTube video that you see once a week. I guess it's easy to criticize and judge that person on that tiny snippet of their life that may have been filmed over months and how much video has been cut from that edit um, you can't cover everything in one small video, so I, I guess it's really easy for people to judge and, and feel the need to write those comments. It's like I had a comment a little while ago, I've had many comments recently, mostly about our India trip, well, I'll, which I'll get into in a bit, but um, there was one comment, in part of the comment, it was like, I was laughing through all your videos thinking, Lucy, what are you doing? And it's like, if people are commenting about that, about think I've missed certain things from a video or whatever in the short amount of time we have to edit a video, like to squeeze everything into one video or a short amount of time in a place, of course we're going to miss things and not see everything in a city. Um, but when you get comments like that, it's then hard for me to be open and make uh, deeper videos like this one, which also was like, I was battling like, should I release this video or not? Because of this, this influx of comments that I've had recently. So these comments, like, they make me take a step back and think, why are we doing this? Why are we making these videos? Why are we putting our life out there? And I know that a lot of people would say, but you do put your life out there, so you have to expect the judgment and the comments. And yes, we do in a certain sense, but that, it's like, what is right and wrong there? You know, like, this is our life, and I, it's our choice that we're making these videos. I get that. So we have to expect the negativity too. But we all wake up in the morning and choose to be kind or not to be kind if you're some people. So I think it's just how you are as a person, it's how you want to make other people feel. So yeah, I've just been thinking like, oh, maybe we'll just stop doing YouTube because 
YouTube can be a really dark place in this in this situation. And it's not like we're putting clickbaity videos out there, like with really cheesy clickbaity titles and thumbnails because we want millions of views and we want to make loads of money off YouTube. That's not why we're doing YouTube. That's not how we do our YouTube channel. We're very real and we just make normal content and we don't want to be someone on video that we're not. We love doing it. We we love it. It's enriched our lives so much and we'd love to be able to carry on, but I just feel like sometimes how can we carry on when we get that kind of negativity? So diving into like our India series comments, we had many comments where people were saying like, why are you going there? Why are you choosing to go to the dirty places and showcase India in such a bad way? And I don't feel like we seeked out to go to bad places. We were just travel vlogging. Um, it's not scripted or anything, like we're just taking the camera with us wherever we go, whatever situation we stumble upon, like whatever street we end up going down. We're looking for the local experience, right? We don't go places to just go to the touristy parts. We want to dive deep into the culture and the local way of living and to connect with locals. Um, so we've found ourselves stumbling around some dodgy streets maybe or but that's okay like that's all part of India and the experience like everyone knows you go to India and there's plastic and it can be a bit dirty like everyone knows that because it's crazy there like it's so busy it's a huge country there's lots of people lots of traffic lots of waste like everyone knows that I, you don't need to watch my YouTube video to know that India looks like that but we showcased it because that was part of our travel and also, if I see plastic pollution or animal abuse, I'm going to speak about it because that's who I am. And I want to speak about these things because I believe in showing the reality of a country. It's the same with Sri Lanka. I've shown plastic pollution by doing beach cleanups. I've shown animal abuse, or not shown it, but... Oh no, I have shown it. Like, we've rescued our own chickens and saved them from slaughter. And, you know, we've shown the good and bad side of everywhere we go because I believe it's good to. When you watch these travel destination YouTube videos you're only shown the paradise idyllic location but when you get there it's like you could be let down because it doesn't look like how stunning it looks in all the edited videos that you see. We're budget travellers so we stay in budget places <laughs> and sometimes they happen to be in like not so clean areas of a place we're not luxury travellers, we don't have money to go spend like extra extra money on luxury accommodation that's in really lovely pristine places. I wish we did, that would be nice. But yeah, the places we went, the experiences we had, that was the reality of where we were travelling. So we videoed it because we were making our India travel videos. I'm just going to read you one kind of comment so I can give a little bit of context into what kind of thing I'm talking about. Maybe you feel the same as this person that's written the comment. Um, and if so, so be it. But I just want to show you how like one comment um, can impact negatively and can affect someone so much. <clears throat> I am of Sri Lankan origins, but I feel the way you have compared India to Sri Lanka is not fair. Sri Lanka is a much smaller country compared to India and therefore is better maintained. I felt that you had a very negative perspective to begin with on India and it's misrepresenting specifically when you spent only a day in Chennai. There are tons of bad sides to Sri Lanka too, but pretty beaches, tourism and romanticism of a life there can hide it all apparently. I am glad that you, a white person, can call Sri Lanka home. Many of us, the Tamil people, had to leave our home because many of us were mass murdered. The pretty Sri Lanka was known for the genocide, but here you are feeling bad for caged animals when Sri Lanka did worse. So let's not make an unfair comparison between countries when all countries have their ugly and good sides. So I feel like there's so much wrong with this comment. I'm shaking, sorry. First of all, personally, I don't feel like we were comparing India. That was never my intention, to compare India to Sri Lanka. Because it's weird to just go to different countries and compare the countries, because every country is different with different cultures and just different ways of living, different foods, different everything, right? So you can't really compare countries, especially 
Sri Lanka to India because India's massive. I'm actually really well traveled around India. It was like four or five years ago. I was traveling around many different parts of India, places I've been to this time around and other different places too, not just the cities. And I feel like I am quite well traveled there so I know what to expect. And even when you go to the countryside and you're out of the cities, you still find dirty places because that's just how it is. The infrastructure there, it needs tightening up by the government. It's not necessarily the people's fault, but maybe it's a lack of education and a lack of infrastructure in place by the government. When you watch our End India series, the uh, episode, the Chennai one, you'll see how glad we are to go back to Sri Lanka. It's not because we hated our time in India. We loved our time in India and we said many times we want to go back to India and experience more and we had a really good time even though we were super super sick which is maybe why we had more of a negative feel about our India trip. It's not because of India, it's because we were really really sick. Um, you can't be super super positive and energetic when you're sick. Like, try it, it's hard. Um, but we loved our time in, Sri in India, we were very open about it, we went to amazing places and I would love to go back to India again, so would Lahiru, like we were very open about that on camera, so we're not being negative about India through the whole of our India series, maybe like 20 seconds, 50 second snippet of a video where we're talking about something that we think could be improved for tourism. So yeah, we were really happy to go back to Sri Lanka because it's our home and we love Sri Lanka so much. Like, it's not because we wanted to run away from India and we, were, we had enough. We just wanted to come back home, we were still really sick and we just wanted to see our dogs and we were excited to get stuck back into some renovation projects. And some places that we went, we were only there for a day. Yeah, like you said, in Chennai, we were there for one day, like, to travel the city. So if we were only there for one day, how can we go to every single amazing place in the city? I feel like we, we went to quite a few places in Chennai and experienced different things and it was really, really lovely. But yeah, we didn't have long enough to experience it or the outside areas. So how can you expect us to do that? I just don't understand. Like, nothing is ever good enough. I think it's unfair to compare my empathy to caged animals and animal abuse to genocide. Um, I know, and everyone knows, that genocide is wrong. It didn't just happen between the Tamils and the Sri Lankan. It's happened in many different countries in the world. Look at the Holocaust, look at Khmer Rouge, look at Myanmar. There's so much going on, even this current day, there's genocide happening. I feel just because there is genocide happening in the world, which is terrible, it's not, it's not me doing that. But my empathy for caged animals is there, so why is it wrong for me to feel sad and want to speak out about animal abuse? Because there's human abuse happening in the world now and in history. I just love animals, like I feel like I'm here, I'm put on this planet to speak out about animal abuse and to try to help the voiceless and to try to educate other people about it as well. And I'm gonna do that, I'm sorry, I'm gonna speak out for animals. Oh, and also, thank you for telling me that I'm a white person, I didn't realise. So just to sum it up here, I never compared India to Sri Lanka, like it was never my intention. Maybe it was misinterpreted uh, when I said, I think there was a comment at the start of a video that I made that India is very different even to what we're used to in Sri Lanka. Meaning that I went to India from Sri Lanka, which in which Sri Lanka is crazy. <laughs> Sometimes, like the roads are crazy, the cities can be crazy. So going from Sri Lanka to India, I think would have been easier if you're looking from the outside than going from India straight from a Western world, like England, for example. Like, then you'd have a huge contrast and you'd probably be more shocked. But what I meant from that comment is that Sri Lanka is crazy too. But India is different because it's a lot bigger. It was never a negative comment. Like, it's hot in India, it's hot in Sri Lanka. Like, if you're going to compare it like that, the food could be potentially very similar depending on the regions that you go. I love our India content. We 
it's memories that we made. It was Lahiri's first trip and even though we were really sick and maybe it wasn't the best place to travel for his first time, it was still really amazing and we both learnt so much about India history and culture and the places that we visited. But I'm just like, maybe we should just delete the India series videos or just not make any travel videos again. Just go there and not have to film. I don't know. Let me know if you like our travel videos. And for those commenting on Lahiri's appearance, is it because you're not happy with what you look like that you feel it's okay to comment about what someone else looks like. Um, he looks like a hippie or scruffy or unkept or not smart. For example, Lucy, try to talk to Lahiri about the way he dresses, his clothes, he looks so awful, his hair, no shoes, wearing slippers. That's why people on the road look and laugh the way you are and the way he looks. He's your husband. You can make him look smarter, dressing a bit more decent. Do you think your comments are going to change him? Do you think your comments are going to change the way I see him and think of him? Where is the freedom of looking how you want to look? Wearing what you want to wear? I used to live in Camden in London and it's like one of the most alternative places I've ever been and people wear the most loudest clothes they want to wear, the craziest, loudest, brightest makeup, their hair sticking up with all this gel. That is freedom of expression and no one's there to judge you, like it's normal if you want to dress that way. I would never comment on someone's appearance because you never know how it's going to affect them and how hurtful that single comment can be. And why can't people just be kind and supportive? Why do people always have to find the negatives and pick out people's flaws? Wow, is that what the world has come to? Is that what social media is now? A place to slate people for what they look like? I don't know about you, but I get such good feelings when I give someone a positive comment like oh you look really beautiful today oh I love what you're wearing you look so good I just feel like I'm giving positivity it feels good it makes me feel good that I've given that positivity and I want to uplift people's day you know put a smile on their face at the start of the day and for someone to be like oh thank you you know it's nice to be like that like honestly if you're not happy with the content that we make with the places that we go or how we document videos or how we look like then don't be here please don't watch our videos and please don't leave negative comments it's simple i just want our channel to be a safe positive space where we can be creative and it's our life at the end of the day we're letting you into our life and it's hard to be that open when we're receiving such criticism and we hope that going forward our true supporters are gonna stick with us and continue with the amazing encouraging comments that we get and not the malicious and unkind type and that we can just keep creating this wonderful online community and going back to the animal shelter we're not just completely quitting on them and abandoning the dogs we're just gonna take our time and volunteer there as much as possible when we have time in our busy schedule i'm there three days a week anyway and just to be able to continue doing the work and also to be able to keep continuing to spread the awareness about the incredible work that's done there like those dogs are our family we love them so much we've been there to see so many of them coming in and we've been a part of their recovery story. They've come in near death, suffering huge traumas, and we've been a part of their journey to get through it, to help them heal, and to see them on the other side, living an amazing life in a safe space, surrounded by people who love them, and they're a very large dog family. <laughs> it's a really special place to us and I'm sure many of you know that so it, we're not just going to take a complete step back and ditch the dogs and abandon them, no. They're still very much a large part of our life and we still encourage you to come and visit the sanctuary and see what is being done there because it's absolutely incredible and to connect with the dogs yourself. And we made this transition in August of 2023 when we took a step back and um, kind of tried implementing this new way of living for us, which we're still trying to work out and balance because there's still a lot going on, so it takes a lot of time. And I mean, I'm still not like completely 100%, um, 
but it's getting better. I just couldn't keep pretending that everything was okay. Like, I just had to say I'm not okay, you know, and just be honest with myself about it. So yeah, I'm feeling a lot better now. Um, it's still taking a long time because it do doesn't just like go like that where you can switch your moods and everything is miraculously okay. Like, no, it doesn't work like that. It takes a long time. I'm having to work through emotions and the emotional trauma <laughs> that came with it, that came with the last three years. But yeah, it feels good to be taking control back of my life or at least trying to in some, in some sense. It's just a whirlwind of emotions and struggles and challenges. I really don't need to think I'm complaining about my life because that's not it. I love my life and I'm so grateful and happy with my life. Like I'm happy now. I just wasn't for a period of time, but that's just because of my, what I was going through. But please don't think it's a complaint and I'm complaining about my life because I'm not. Like I'm, I know I'm grateful for my life and, and what I have in my life, it's just that there was a lot going on and it was constant and it felt like there were so many hurdles to get over and I'm sure maybe most of you could relate in some way watching this. We all suffer with challenges and stress and it's just really important I think to be able to talk about them and not let them, not bury them somewhere deep inside of you, you know. It's important to find people around you that you can trust, that can help you through those difficult times and to try to not let it affect you too much. Like that's really, it's easy to say than do, right? And I can't really talk because I've been affected a lot. And I just wanna take this moment to thank our supporters, our subscribers that tune into our videos without fail, every single video and watch our videos and comment the really amazing supportive comments that keep us going, honestly. Thank you for being here, for watching our videos, like you're watching our life, and yeah, just for being a part of this online community. Because without you guys watching and for encouraging us, we wouldn't be doing this. So it's because of you that we're here, so thank you. Because on my down days when I have like before, like quite a bit before, when I was having these down days and I'd read the comments and some of the comments were just, I'd just cry, like happy tears because they're so supportive. And then I read them and I'm like, I just gotta keep going because there are people out there that believe in us. And that's really special because it's really hard to like, I do criticize myself so much and think like, oh, this is boring. Like, why would people watch this? I feel like I'm not putting anything decent out there, you know? And then like to see people's reactions and the positivity coming through, I'm like, oh, okay, <laughs> that's really nice. Yeah, thank you guys, honestly, from the bottom of my heart for giving me the motivation to keep carrying on and just being here, just showing up to us every week. Sometimes not every week if we've missed an upload. Um, yeah, for the original people that are here still watching, for the new subscribers that are here watching, if you've made it this far in the video, thank you. Thank you for listening to me. <laughs> It's really not an easy decision to put this video out there on YouTube. Like anyone could watch this video. And it's so deep and emotional, I guess. And um, it's so personal. So I really debated whether to put this video out there, but I just feel I need to. Like I can't stop thinking about it. Like I just need, I need to put this out there. If I can empower a few other people to take control of their emotions and their life and if you're not happy with something in your life like know that you should change that something to improve your well-being if you have negative people in your lives people that always put you down get them out of your life like life is too short to be suffering and to be be having so much self-doubt and lack of confidence like take control of your life, you know? And if there's anything I can help you with, like I'm not 
a therapist or anything, but if you just need someone to have a chat with, then reach out to me, um, direct message me on Instagram, and I, I would love to chat with you and, um, and help you in whatever way I can, yeah, even if that's just having a, a little online talk. Yeah, sorry for the negative uh, upload. I just feel it's real, so I had to put it out there, and obviously, if you don't wanna watch it, don't watch it. Um, and I know it's not our usual positive content that we're putting out, and fun-filled, and action-packed, um, but yeah, I felt like it was important for me to make it, so thank you for being here, and thank you for listening to me ramble on. I've talked a lot. Um, yeah, that's it. Thanks guys. See you in the next video for hopefully a fun filled video of some sort of renovation or day in the life. I don't know what video is going to be next. Whatever video I end up editing first I guess. <laughs> Thank you. I'll see you soon.